The ground is very boggy. Umpire Fallot is uh, face onto the camera. It is Jeff Morrow who throws the ball into the air. No, the other way around, in fact. Mullane nowhere to go. Well caught by Kylie. So uh, maybe this time umpire Fallot gets to throw it up. No, it's umpire Morrow, I'm right. <laughs> He's lost his moustache, umpire Jeff Morrow. Gone the clean shaven look. Now here is former Preston player. Hunt kicking the ball up towards the wing. So a bit of uh, shifting from club to club has gone on this season. But good to see that those Paran players that are drafted have decided that uh, they're going to see the season out with the two Blues. Greg Doyle is going to play for Melbourne, hopefully in the seniors this season. As Noble drives the ball up to centre half forward. Missed by Burke. That was Winton on hands and knees. Hunt again, the handball, a difficult one for Lacko. Kick forward from Tom Shelton. Ball knocked away from Rakoff. Povey diving on it. Up towards Taylor. Good hands. Hand off to Winton. Two Blues get the opening goal. No, Tom Kuypert it was that kicked it. Tom Kuypert getting the goal. So good start for Paran. Yeah, great passage of play, persistence, and Taylor's quick hands featured prominently here. We'll see on screen the big man, yes, feeding the ball out to Kuypert, and Kuypert wrong footed his opponent and snapped through truly. One interesting clash, Philip, will be that centre bounce area with uh, Aaron Martello having to take on the ruck duties in the absence of Tim Burke, who's now retired, and Milligan just seems to be a little bit too muscly in the experience for him at the moment. But Paran again get it out of the middle. It's their captain, Richard Chappell. Ovi did well there. Here's Kuypert again. Line ball. Boundary umpire well positioned to say it had gone out. Tommy Kuypert, former Springvale player and best and fairest in the amateurs last year. And had a very good year with Paran. Taylor's been extremely happy with his performances. Elaine. Three going to Reese Langan. An article in the recorder this week about brothers. And there are two for Paran. Scott Langan on the bench. Here's Kennedy, the coach. From halfback, Tom Shelton. Lining up on Dennis Knight on the wing into Noble. Quick move in board. Looking good. Oh, Sydney dropped it. Gathers quickly. And a fortunate kick, I think, into the arms of the Grant Povey. I agree with you, Roscoe. I don't think there was a great deal of intent there. But fortunately, it found a teammate. He does kick the ball extremely well, Povey. Usually he does, Sam. Left the boot nicely, but astray. What do you think of his uh, racing tips in the age, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> we haven't been following them very closely, Peter, but... Uh, the reports that have filled it back say that he has got a reasonable idea. He puts a lot of work into that uh, tactics or strategies column. I wonder if he's giving BT a few tips. Behind the pack, Sheldon went the uh, fist, but Milligan too strong. Here's Kennedy going past. Very tight over here on this grandstand wing. Knight, back from suspension. The well, handball was too far for Lacko. Kylie got the ball out to Rhys Langan. Good vision. Well done, Rhys Langan. Unfortunately, Kuiper couldn't pick it up. There's Dimitina. Well positioned back there, the defensive Danny on Taylor's mark. So it's uh, Paran doing all the attacking in the opening minutes. Pass in towards Kennedy. He's spoilt by Kuiper. Wrapped up his tackle. He's such a terrific tackle. I'm sure he'd appreciate the effort from Knight, or he would have when they were VFA teammates. Perhaps not so much on opposite sides. Dennis Knight. Coming up the ground today, Marshall in front of Walford. Stolen by Canarakis. He has kept it in, bound round by deeming so. Good centering kick. It's fisted away. In comes Kylie. Plenty of two blues there. Sydney a quick hand pass. Ran out of attack through Martello. Now to Chapel. Good lead for him from Povey. Now, slightly further out this time, but further out as he goes for the pass towards Taylor Dimitina running pass in board of the better one Shelton oh he pushed there might be a free kick paid now there yeah. is 
He missed the shot anyway. It was a silly free in the end. Let's watch the infringer. Taylor. Is Povey lined up on the wing or half forward, Ross? He's certainly a tall boy to have on a flank, isn't he? Not it, I think. No, Povey's role is he's basically got a loose commission across the forward line. His job is to be at the base of the packs right across that forward line. Did I You'll say notice... Povey? I meant Shelton, did I? Just to see where he is. Oh, Shelton's on a half forward flank. No, on a wing, sorry, Phil. And uh, he makes no mistake, Tom Shelton. He's playing on. Look back during the course of the term and here, Taylor again. Whilst he hasn't had many possessions, he's been doing some very constructive farming of the ball. And here on screen, we see Tom Shelton put one through. And they look very good. They had the numbers to the ball. They were extremely des desperate, very focused. And certainly concentration wasn't a problem. And one of the few ventures forward by Dandenong, finding Reno Preto, who kicked atrociously. Four short of his 900th milestone. Sinny did, oh, on that occasion, it was a fabulous mark there by Burke, I think it was. Yes, Darren Burke. But Sinny certainly had the better of that encounter. He's been a wonderful player across that wing. Markov. Very lively at centre half forward, kicking truly. And they look very good, Phil, didn't they? Well, they do, Sam. They went after the ball very hard, a lot of purpose, and they were certainly there key to the game. Which resulted in Rakov coming off. Mm. Dandy just not attacking the ball with any confidence. And Michael Kennedy mentioned in the speech there to be a bit smarter, and they haven't been smart with the use of the ball, they haven't found the targets well. Makes it difficult when their small men have been contained yes. and their talls really aren't bit. asserting any influence on the game, are they? No, and they're in the conditions. They're a bit slow, aren't they? They're not able to get to the contest. Now, if they're not taking a mark, Danny Cassette's looked dangerous, but the ball hasn't been near Predo much. Look at the Good bowl stuff, which is uh, now out of date. So we get the going out there, to, Yeah, you can have that. There'll be a lot of salmon fills out in, in Tallyland now with these tops on. Well, more importantly, that second term was another good quarter for Perrant. And... Here we see on screen doing very well. Sinny is almost best man on the ground, centre of the ball. And I think Tom Kuiper here, or is it? No, it wasn't Kuiper on that occasion. It was, it was Tom Kuiper. I'm sorry, he's having an absolute Classy ball. Classic player, Kuiper. Yes, isn't he? across half forward. And there was that snap from Gotch, who's been well contained. And really, Dandenong's woes have continued because of uh, Gotch's containment. Knight, there we see Truella take a fine overhead and convert. And, of course, Brett McCormick's doing a superb job at full forward in nullifying Dandenong's ace goal kicker in Reno Preto. Here we see Lacko. No, sorry, Richard Wicks. They made a real run at them here. Um... In the initial 15 minutes that second quarter was relatively even, and they did get within, I think, four goals. And they were looking good in general field play, but they've since struggled and uh, Peran have got back on the boil and there we see a fine snap They had to work hard Honky. for the goals, yes. Phil, though, didn't they? Well, I, I've been a bit critical of Dandenong, but I, I must say that Peran have really attacked the ball hard and have put so much pressure on Peran that they just... Uh, sorry, on Danny. They have, haven't been able to get their runners going in the midfield. The likes of Darren Burke and Knight and Mullane. Mullane came in for the while. Gotch has been held, as Sam mentioned. Paul's been relatively quiet yeah. by his standards. Reese Langan there on screen has had plenty of the ball. They look more dangerous up forward too, Peran, but they're very good in the midfield. And Preto really has been well held by Brett McCormack. McCormack number Kuiper 37 again, Phil. for Peran has been a real strong player. Dimitri has yeah. been a good player. Yes, he has. And Kuiper's been ever elusive and dangerous, used the ball well. I just reckon they've had a more efficient forward line, and by that I mean they've had a lot more movement, a lot more options, as opposed to Dandenong, who have been very stereotype up there, relying on a big grab from either a, a Preto or a Marshall, who both key forwards have been very well held, and as a matter of fact, we saw Marshall sent to the uh, half-back line when, uh, I think it was, uh, who came off... Terrific in midfield, Paran. You know, whilst Milligan may have been winning the knocks, but they've all got all that quality possession out of midfield, and here's the captain Thompson coach, Brian Taylor. We'll hear what he has to say to his charges. Total embarrassment wasn't the place for the club. It really was. For everyone concerned, it was just a total embarrassment. A chance for some good revenge here. One thing to consider. One thing to consider about the opposition plight we're playing. Don't underestimate them. They are the most dangerous team when they're a long way behind. They just thrive on an initial spark of enthusiasm and it'll just fire them. I'm telling you, Come on. respect the opponent that you are playing for the next 15 minutes of this quarter. Respect them. 
in the fact that you know they're capable of coming back. So what I'm saying is, you, in the first 15 minutes of this quarter, wrap it up by going back to your man. Forget we started to get away from our men then. Now let's go back again. Let's go back a cog. Man up our guys. Start all over again. Don't leave off from where we left there. It was good. I was happy with it. But now let's tighten up for the first 15 minutes. Beat our opponent in that 15, first 15 minutes. And then you can start to run and create a bit. But just because we're 10 goals up, kicking at the goal, and you know, all know that that's the goal scoring into the ground. Come on. It doesn't give us the license to all of a sudden become uh, kick chasers, no. handball chasers. Right. We've got play. to this position not because we've played great football, because we haven't. We've just played good pressure football. Physical pressure. Physical presence pressure. Jesus, how many chases have I seen today from behind where you've just got a hand to him? It's had no effect on him at all, but it's made him hurry the kick and the kick's gone up in the air and Sugar's punched it away. You know, you're spoiling the delivery. You're not giving him a chance. Every time. Well, uh, good stuff, Nick Probert. Good point, Dad. Every time. Not got uh, you, got saying it's been a perfect performance, but uh, I think underneath he'd be very pleased. It's an 11 goal lead, in fact, for Paran. And uh, in this third quarter, it was all two blues. There's Povey with a great mark. He came down hard on his kidneys. It's a mark of the day from Grant Povey. It's a shame that the conversion wasn't a major because it certainly was deserved of it. Wasn't a bad kick, considering he was in some discomfort. Just touched by Hollow there. Martello onto Di Martino, who's been brilliant through midfield. Onto the big man up forward. You know, who probably had his colours lowered by Chris Hollow, who's done a superb job. Quick pass into Truella, who's unguarded in the square. And another one through for the two Blues. And Phil, like we said earlier, that they've had that quality possession through midfield. You know, whilst Milligan's done well in the actual knockouts, you know, Langan and the likes of this guy, Shelton yeah. on screen, have done yeah. very, very well. And Markov, of course, has been a focal point for him in attack. Yeah. Well, even like the likes of Darren Burke... Well, that was a, a difficult of... one to a judge there. It was called... Uh, it's called... That he'd gone over the mark. Yes, but... you've got it. You can't move until the umpire calls a bit. Knight hasn't been the same player that he has been over the year or last year. That's the sort year. of tackling that we expect yes. from Dandy Nong. Paran have done it today. Darren Burks, another who's had a bit of the ball, but he's tended to have to go wide. He hasn't been as creative through the midsection as he normally is, and this Taylor's setting it up there for Kuypert, who's been very elusive across the forward line. And we've seen that from Tom Kuypert on many an occasion before. Reno Preto been well held by Brett McCormack. That one dropped short, and McConkey was able to chip in at the back of the pack and kick a goal. But they've been very disappointing today, Danny. They didn't look good at the start of the game. They sort of set the pattern up in the first five minutes where they looked lethargic. That was Kylie again out through yep. the centre, setting it up. Big kick there from Povey. Povey. And Jack Marshall's such an important player for Dan Nong to have to have him at centre. Two wins and, uh, you know, we've been up with two losses, which has uh, meant that today's game held a lot more importance than uh, any other game did. And it was just great that... Uh, Although we said that we didn't probably play as good as we have done, especially against Werribee, but today uh, everything combined pretty well, well enough to win anyway. And it was uh, very satisfying to have a win like that against a, you know, last year's grand final winner. So um, I'm sure they'll be very happy down the, the two Blues camp. OK, <laughs> very well spoken. Uh, you know, great, well-educated there, Sam. And they're the keys to the Mazda, and I guess you've got some thank yous. Yes, I'd just like to thank uh, Vic Safe and Mazda for sponsoring the VFA. And, uh, you know, it's sponsors like that that keep uh, competitions like this uh, very well afloat and popular with the supporters. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, well done. Tommy Kyber, our man of the match. Before we go, here's uh, a man that's... Uh, we ought to uh, congratulate it from all VFA supporters. Greg Doyle, the number two draftee from uh, Dan Long. Well done. I guess uh, you must have felt a, a bit sorry back to being on the fence today. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not too bad watching when your side's winning, but uh, it was very hard. The boys, I mean, a few things went against them early and Perrin got on top and it just seemed to flow on from there, so it was very hard. But sort of got to get my uh, allegiance away from Dan Long now and get it over to Melbourne and uh, hopefully... I can uh, continue having a good season and break into their side before the end of the year. OK, no Doyle, no Danny on. No. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I think the boys just had a bad day and they'll come back well against uh, Sandringham next week. OK, and congratulations on your drafting by Melbourne. Yeah, uh, Greg Doyle, uh, former Danny Nong, a great ruckman, and Tom Kuyvert, our man of the match today. Both men. Board this one. See if we can count the handballs here. One, two, three... Well, I don't think we'll count that one as a handball, but that one is four, five, six. There's another one coming, seven, and here's the goal. No, there's an eight. Here's Truella. Eight handballs without a Dandenong player touching it. Phil, you've got to be full of admiration for that. 
Well, that's how they played all day. Peter. Brian Taylor talking to Ross Booth. Yes, uh, Sam, I, well, it was very difficult to choose that man of the match. had about eight players that could have won it today, Brian. Well, you should never have asked me that question, Ross, but uh, there was uh, uh, great contributors out there. You know, there's 20 guys that in some way did uh, something good for the for the club today. And, uh, you know, we, were get, we went out there with specific jobs in mind on certain players. And uh, fortunately today for us it worked and we were able to reverse the fortunes of last year. OK, terrific, Brian. Another man who played a good game today. Tommy Shelton, you must have had an early night today, <laughs> last night, Tom. Yeah, a bit of an early night, mate, yeah. yeah. On the wing, you like that? Oh, it's a bit of a change, but I'm kind of uh, adjusting and I uh, uh, found it hard at the start, but oh, it's all right. With a bit of room to move, it's not too bad. And I guess you're an old fan of Tom Carpet from uh, school days. Oh, yeah, we, we've known each other for a little while, Scotch and Melbourne guys, so... Yeah. Yeah. OK, well done, Tommy. And uh, as I say, any number of eight players could have won the Vic Safe Man of the Match, but uh, BT and the two Blues, reasonably happy. Another good win to them. Yes, who wouldn't be happy? The Hawks, eight goals.